Good. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are live and recording. Uh, my name is Lucia Jar. I'm acting uh, editor in chief at uh, Euractiv Slovakia web portal, and it is my utmost pleasure to welcome you today uh, at this debate titled "Data in Transatlantic Area: Free Flow, Cooperation, or Competition." Uh, we intend to discuss the latest development within the ongoing discussion about the transatlantic cooperation in digital economy. Um, recently, uh, it was really a driving debate, both in the European Union and across the Atlantic in the US. And um, practically from the last year since the Court of Justice of the European Union decided that it, going to, it is going to restrict the European uh, data um, transferring to the US, known uh, as an EU Privacy Shield Agreement. Um, since then, the discussion is ongoing. And actually, recently, the, in, in March, both administrations in Europe and the United States uh, has announced that those discussions will be intensifying. This discussion is also very much relevant to uh, Central uh, and Eastern European region, and especially to, to Slovakia, because we are starting to realize that uh, data are absolutely going to be the driving force of the, 20, of, of the economy of the future and really a petrol of the 21st century. And that is uh, going to be an important uh, topic for, for any other country, even smaller, um, and, and in the part of Europe where we are here in Slovakia. So I'm very glad that uh, we were able to put the event together where people that are actually uh, directly involved in those discussions, both from the European side and uh, from the American side, are going to speak today. And I think it's really a unique opportunity. So I would like to, at the beginning, uh, welcome our distinct panelist, Mr. David Mu, connecting from Washington, who is a digital economy officer at the Bureau of European Affairs at the US Department of State. Welcome. Mr. Bruno Gencherali, who is the head of the International Data Flow and Protection Unit at the European Commission, connecting from Brussels. And Mr. Milan Andrejkovic, head of the Central Data Office at the Ministry of Investment, Regional Development and Informatization of the Slovak Republic. Thank you very much, all three of you. Um, secondly, I'm going to also thank and uh, express uh, my gratitude to um, our partners uh, who helped us organize this event. It was the Embassy of the United States in the Slovak Republic and Euro Policy um, Organization. And finally, let me also thank you, our audience, either here on Facebook, that, uh, on, on Zoom, or uh, on Facebook uh, that logged in and that are um, following us online. I'm very glad that you found the time. And we see that uh, there are many experts um, from either states or, or a private sector, think tanks and, and other stakeholders. So thank you very much for, for coming on board. And we very much obviously encourage you to participate because we want this to be debate. There are two ways to participate, either to write a question uh, to in, in Zoom uh, here down to the bar at Q&A, directed either to me or uh, to our team. Or secondly, you can raise your hand uh, here on Zoom. Uh, we will uh, turn on your camera and, uh, and your microphone and you can comment or, or uh, ask some questions. This event also will be recorded as a video and will be also available as a podcast. So those are all the, all the things that I was supposed to say at the beginning. Let's start uh, from, uh, from, the, from explaining maybe how this discussion will be framed. Uh, we'll start uh, maybe uh, from um, rather general overview and exploring really a state of play of those discussions that we currently have uh, from the perspective of United States, European Union, and also Slovakia. We will secondly look in, um, into talks that are ongoing from the perspective of industry and how industry is playing the role here. Uh, on the third place, we will check on the influence of the public. And lastly, 
I will evaluate some upcoming trends and agenda within that brighter subject. So US government and the European Commission, as I, as I said, intensified negotiations on the enhanced EU-US Privacy Shield framework or EU-US Privacy Shield number two. So um, let's start uh, in, in Washington, Mr. Mu. Um, the Biden administration, I think it's going to be about seven days short from celebrating 100 years in office. We already are seeing uh, quite a development, but Biden administration claimed that really data economy and data force, uh, data driven economies, digital economies are really going to be in the front row of, uh, of the discussion of uh, his policies. So um, since January, many items regarding data driven economies have been already outlined. We've heard some rumors here and there, uh, but I would like to know directly from the uh, from the administration, how do you evaluate the current state of play in this data flow agenda? And uh, maybe what are the highlights that are on your table? Sure, thanks Lucia for, uh, for inviting me and including me and thanks to Milan and Bruno for, for um, engaging in this discussion. Uh, looking forward to the whole conversation and, and to hearing from the participants as well. Um, so as Lucia said, I cover digital economy issues for the European Bureau at the Department of State. Um, I've gotten to work a lot with, with Bruno and, and his team in, in, in Brussels and with other parts of the, the Brussels team and with many, many of the member states on various digital initiatives, every, everything from uh, this data policy issue we're focused on today to the AI, like the regulations that just came out um, from, from DG Connect yesterday. Um, and uh, um, digital services, digital markets, all of these things are really important areas of cooperation um, with, uh, with Europe and with many of the member states. So I'm really glad to be a part of this conversation today. Um, and stepping back to answer your question to the big picture first, um, you know, President Biden came in with a, with a vision to really focus on um, building, building our relationships with our key allies um, even, even stronger. So uh, in Europe is at the central of all of these conversations. Um, so we, we really are seeking to, to um, engage with Europe in, in new and exciting ways. Um, and, you know, and, and as you said, President Biden also has a, a, a vision for making sure that, that the United States um, maintains or grows uh, a, a leadership role along with its partners and allies in the digital economy, because that's, that's the economy of the future. And, and we want to make sure that, uh, that the um, technology that, that we all are using more and more every day is, is backed by our shared democratic values, the rule of law, um, and that it's not being used in ways that, that are contrary to those, to those principles. So um, combining those two things together, um, my job got a lot busier when on January 20th when, when he said we need to uh, make sure to, um, you know, rebuild our relationships with our European allies, and uh, and focus on the digital economy. So that's that's the center of, of what I, I'm working on every day. Within the broader European relationship, we're looking to uh, to re repair some of the issues that, that of things that have had gotten sort of broken over the last years, um, and then to uh, revitalize the engagement. So our secretary has already been to Brussels twice. Um, the president has spoken to um, many of the leaders of, of Europe. Uh, there's a very high level of engagement um, happening across the board. Um, and then we want to really raise the level of ambition. So once we get some of these problem areas out of the way, our ambition is that we're working together on, on a very wide range of very far reaching, important areas, in, in, including in the technology space. Um, so in some sense, we, we put this, the conversations about data flows and transatlantic data flows specifically in the context of something that needs to be repaired. We, we had a privacy shield mechanism um, that, that was working well for, for companies, and we want to uh, re restore some form of that um, through, through our discussions with, with, uh, with the European Commission. Um, so that we can restore data flows. Um, more broadly across the world, we, we, we really think that, you know, an open, uh, secure, reliable internet is fundamental to, to our growth and, and um, we don't want data silos to be created. I, uh, I don't think that, you know, I'm not gonna put words in Bruno's mouth, but I don't think the European Commission wants that, that happening. I don't think Milan probably wants that happening. So we all need to just find ways to make it work. Um, that doesn't mean it's easy uh, to, 
to address the problems that exist, but um, but we are really focused on finding a way to make it work so that we can really start focusing on the on the bigger picture issues at hand. Mm -hmm. um, and could you maybe elaborate to be a little bit more concrete when we talk about the subjects that are currently really on your desk? Like I I, I want to understand which are the topics that are really debated around this month. Um, on the data flow specifically, the 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 you know there's there's a very very much in common between the United States and Europe on on our approach to uh, data protection. Um, the 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 broad based principles that we both believe are 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 reflected in very different ways in the way we actually legislate and, and manage these things. Um, but uh, you know from from sort of a commercial activity perspective, are, we're, we're quite similar. Um, the United States doesn't have a top-down privacy uh, rule like the GDPR. Um, we have uh, sector-specific regulations that are very strict in things like health data. We have something called the Health Insurance um, Portability Act that, that uh, requires you, companies that access health data to take very, very close um, control of that. We have sector-specific regulations in the financial sector. Children's data is very tightly protected. Um, and then companies also have make their own commitments to their customers uh, uh, about their own privacy rules. And those commitments, we hold them to those commitments. And if they violate those commitments, um, then they are subject to sometimes massive fines. You know, the Facebook got a $5 billion fine for violating its own privacy commitments. Um, so again, it's not the same as, as GDPR and some of those disconnects between the way we do this are, are what cause some of the problems. But the fundamental issues at, at at stake in the European court decision were more about how governments access data. And I'm happy to dive into that more later in the discussion, um, but I think we have a good story to tell on that as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much also for, for introducing and from, for uh, explaining the topics that, uh, that are uh, currently at play and the most discussed. Uh, let's go with very similar question to, to Brussels, Mr. Genshirali. Um, what are the main goals, maybe, and expectations uh, of the European Commission's, uh, Commission in the intensified discussion? So first, thank you very much for, for having me today. And uh, hello to you, to, to the audience, and to my uh, 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 co-panelists. I'm very happy to, to be on this panel. First, I want to, to very much agree uh, with, with David. Uh, uh, the the, the digit, our, our, our digital agenda goes uh, uh, and our mutual interests go far beyond the uh, data flows or, or, or privacy. Uh, uh, we can see uh, that there's a real uh, opportunity now, real momentum to um, join forces to protect the, the principles uh, we, we both, uh, both the, the EU and the, and the US hold dear, uh, address some common uh, uh, challenges and, uh, and also uh, better says uh, some, some opportunities. And that goes from artificial intelligence, we were very also Please, that we uh, we observe with with interest a, a quite positive uh, uh, reaction uh, in in Washington to uh, the uh, package uh, we we adopted uh, yesterday. Um, we saw uh, some tweets from from the White House. We were no longer uh, very much used to those uh, uh, positive uh, tweets. Uh, I said from artificial intelligence to to hate speech and uh, illegal uh, online content, for example, to give you uh, uh, some examples of. Uh, of uh, uh, the breath, uh, the death of uh, uh, what could be a, a common uh, and what is already, uh, uh, to some extent, a common uh, uh, digital transatlantic uh, agenda. Uh, in um, communication, the, 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 the Commission and the, our external service, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, published uh, for, for, for new uh, transatlantic agenda, uh, that, that digital component was very much uh, stressed. Um, so that's uh, uh, certainly one thing, and as I said, it, it covers a, a very uh, a broad range of issues. Um, when we look at, at data flows, um, well, indeed, this is something that uh, uh, we... Are you still hearing me? I am frozen. No, no, we can. We, okay, okay. We can hear you. Sorry, sorry for that. I, I, I saw there was a connection problem. So, yes, uh, you've seen indeed, uh, 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 you were kind enough to refer to the joint statement by uh, the two 
a person who are leading this uh, this this exercise on, on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, Commissioner for Justice Reinders and uh, Commerce Secretary Raimondo issued a joint, uh, a joint statement a few, few weeks ago to first confirm that this is absolutely a priority on uh, uh, both sides uh, of the uh, Atlantic. Uh, and uh, that we, we, we want indeed to intensify our work on trying to develop a successor arrangement to, to the privacy sheet. Uh, that joint statement makes also clear that that uh, 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 successor arrangement has to fully comply uh, with the uh, 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 requirements set by the uh, uh, Court of Justice in the Shrimps 2 judgment. That's not only an obligation, of course, for us, because that's a, 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 a ruling of our highest court, but it is also very important to, to deliver what what uh, stakeholder stakeholders expect, uh, and by that I mean stability, legal certainty, uh, uh, sustainability in terms of transatlantic uh, uh, data flows. So we don't underestimate it, of course, the, the complexity of the issues uh, we, we have uh, to to address, which, as as, as David has already uh, uh, mentioned, uh, refer um, relate to the complex, uh, delicate. Uh, but important, and once again important on, on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, uh, interplay between on the one hand uh, privacy and on the, on the other hand uh, uh, national security. But we believe that as like-minded partners, we should be able uh, to find appropriate solutions uh, on what, what, what are these principles and the requirements that are the core of, of the Court of Justice judgment. I think we believe that those are, are principles that are cherished Shares once again on both sides of the Atlantic, access to court, uh, enforceable uh, individual rights, limitation against excessive interference uh, uh, with privacy. And I'm mentioning those issues because um, that's uh, something that I would say this should distinguish uh, like-minded uh, partners uh, such as the EU and the US from other uh, systems around the world uh, that have a very different approach uh, to uh, uh, such uh, such uh, such issues and uh, uh, don't uh, share uh, uh, the uh, same uh, attitude uh, versus privacy, including when it comes to uh, uh, access to data by uh, uh, government authorities. So, uh, to uh, make a long short sorry uh, story short, this is hard work. This is complex work, but uh, we are. Uh, absolutely engaged, and I think I can speak also uh, for my uh, 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 American colleagues, we are absolutely engaged and ready and uh, working uh, intensively uh, on uh, 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 trying to, to develop a success arrangement to, to the privacy sheet. Just to very shortly break down these talks, could you explain how it is in practice, like how what kind of people are meeting, uh, who they are representing, uh, what kind of working groups maybe there are uh, at the European side? How how is this uh, procedural? I don't know template or. Well, although we are uh, speaking of a sort of um, unusual, I would say, animal, uh, because what we are uh, um, what we are aiming at here is adopting a so-called adequacy uh, decision, and an adequacy decision is a decision that. Uh, it's an instrument that we have in our, uh, on the, our data protection rules that allow uh, uh, the, 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 the free flow of data between the EU and the third country. We, we, we have a number of such adequacy decisions. We just concluded negotiations uh, for such an adequacy decision a few weeks ago with South Korea. Uh, uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, those adequacy decisions uh, uh, being uh, now uh, in the adoption process as regards the UK as, 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 a, as an important component uh, of uh, uh, the uh, uh, new relationship between the EU and the UK. But So that's the final product, uh, uh, but I don't want now to enter into the lingo, uh, uh, the Brussels lingo. But uh, to, to, to reach the final product, you have, nego you, you, you carry out negotiations, uh, which are not uh, uh, very different from any other in, uh, negotiations uh, on, on the EU side. Uh, uh, as, uh, as, as this is a matter which is uh, regulated uh, at EU level, uh, the Commission uh, negotiates and, and, and represents uh, uh, the EU. Uh, here we have a quite clear mandate uh, that the, 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 the uh, judgment of the court. Um, 
And uh, we do that uh, with a mixed group of people, with uh, represent uh, with people with uh, different expertise. This is uh, led uh, by, by us here in the DG, uh, the Director General for the Department of the Commission responsible for justice and consumers. Um, and on the other side, we have a, a, a large group of US delegations in negotiation tends, uh, uh, tend to be uh, uh, large in general, but here we have a large group, I think, which, which, which reflects the importance which is uh, given to such negotiations and also the, 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 the range of issues that are uh, involved from, uh, from, uh, uh, from, from trade to, to privacy and, and national security. So, uh, and uh, of course, uh, nowadays we cannot meet uh, physically, uh, but we uh, uh, have, um, as, as you would expect in, in negotiations, uh, uh, meetings uh, at that. At, uh, at technical levels, uh, which are today uh, 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 taking place uh, um, as we meet uh, now uh, uh, through um, uh, the virtual means we, we all have to use nowadays. Thank you. I will we'll definitely go deeper into what are those technical uh, parameters and, and what are really um, topics uh, individually. Uh, but let's also uh, look into how this debate may be influencing countries such as Slovakia. Uh, Mr. Andrej Kovic, it is clear that the economy of Slovakia is really not based on data just yet, I would say. Um, and probably often it looks uh, that it is kind of sidelined um, as, as, way too, as way too complicated agenda maybe. And uh, that's why um, many actors are involved in the national level but there is not really the, the, the true true owner, the, your uh, data office um, is playing a very important role, but how do you uh, kind of engage the other ministries or, or other actors, stakeholders into this debate, explaining them that, yeah, Slovakia should also have some, some word here. And, and what is that our word, that, that what is our goal in that policy? Uh, okay, good afternoon to all. Uh, being rep representative of 5 million people country, which is really small country in uh, comparison with the uh, high US and EU uh, level representatives, it's uh, quite um, an honor for me because uh, not always we have um, the opportunity to raise our uh, voice and to say uh, something. Uh, Slovakia is a really small country and now we are working on transition bit, uh, of uh, public services from the paperwork to the digitalization. And uh, it, is, it, is the, uh, it is the case of uh, public services that should uh, uh, be more uh, digi uh, in digital way and as well data because a lot of data is now stored on paper, old paper way. And because uh, of uh, this change, uh, it is really important for us to understand what's going on a big international level, because not only uh, already mentioned the GDPR regulation is here, but there are a lot of other regulations already on EU level. For example, we have a free flow of non-personal data, we have open data and public sector information, we have e-privacy and once only principle and so on. So therefore uh, we are almost not, not, not directly on the starting point, but still in the developing phase of our IT systems, of our registers, and therefore we can uh, use the opportunity to start great from the from the start from the start. Um, we prepared uh, our completely new uh, act on data, and this act on data was done in a very transparent and participatory way. We have uh, uh, approximately five working groups consisting of uh, almost 100 people. And uh, these people consist of uh, public administration representatives from uh, non-profit members, from for-profit members, from academia. So we got a lot of experience from the bottom. Uh, therefore, the proposal of our data act is the result of from the bottom requirements, not, not, uh, not from the top. And, uh, we are now in the legislative process. We hope to uh, have this data act adopted this year. So if we need to uh, 
change something because of uh, existing or ongoing uh, changes uh, based on these uh, discussions, we need to be prepared and to do it now. So the situation is that we from the bottom, we know a lot of our uh, daily experience. Uh, we need a lot of problems that uh, this regulation from the top brings. For example, uh, it's not really, uh, it's really hard to implement, for example, GDPR on a technical uh, IT level, because on the on the legal part, it's okay, we can understand, but if the computer should decide whether such data is or is not personal data, it's uh, it needs uh, good uh, rules. So th therefore, we try to help uh, other ministries and other involved uh, public agencies to implement all this international regulation into our uh, practice. What, 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 was, uh, what was mentioned, uh, just, just to add, what was mentioned that we need a clear, transparent uh, regulation that is understandable for everyone. And um, once the Data Act in Slovakia will be implemented, how is it going to be influenced in the future, once the EU US privacy shield will be in some way renewed, how can it in incorporate either the things that will be agreed on the EU uh, US level or even at the EU level because EU is working on many, many other bills related uh, to that. So how, how we will be, um, how flexible will, will this um, agenda be? Okay, it's, it's act, so it's flexible as other regulation. Uh, from one point of view, it, it's, I said already that it's from the bottom to the top. So we uh, we, we use the experience from from the from the uh, member working group uh, members. Uh, this uh, data act uh, only now uh, takes care about the public administration data management, because we only could find solution on that level. It means that only public administration and management of data within the public agencies is more or less involved in this data act. Uh, immediately uh, after we have it, in, after the legislation process, we will continue discussions for new topics. One of topic is the exchange of data between public and private sector, about categorization, about the data quality and security. And for example, one of the open question is whether we could put public data into international cloud, which is, mm -hmm. which is, which is a big topic now in Slovakia as well. So uh, this is not the final uh, law for 20 years or more. It's a law because there is nothing now in Slovakia the public agencies really need to have some uh, first rules how to develop their uh, systems. But we are really open and happy to continue discussions uh, for the questions that are not already solved in this uh, proposal. Thank you. And we will definitely get into more details again uh, uh, about kind of Slovak goals uh, in that whole debate. Uh, but as I said, let's let's move a little bit into the industry part. Let's let's discuss now. Um, because we know that millions of jobs uh, and a large share of the transatlantic trade depends strongly on those digital ties that we already have. Um, over 5,300 companies used private sh uh, privacy shield in the past. Now, currently, these businesses are uh, using some alternatives, uh, trying to use this standard contractual clauses in order to uh, to be able to comply with the GDPR and, and the rules uh, on both sides uh, of Atlantic again. Uh, but many absolutely suffered under under this kind of new conditions. Uh, we, we read a couple of I read a couple of stories about uh, how the American companies are coping with it. Um, so when it comes to Representing the American industry, uh, Mr. Mu, um, how, what, what are the demands or maybe some red flags that you are hearing from the from the American industry? Uh, what to bring into that debate when we are discussing with with Europeans? Sure, it's a good question. Thank you. And um, you know, I, I think that the the impact of this is being felt most most dramatically on small and medium companies. And, and these are American companies, but they're also European companies that um, 
don't necessarily have the legal resources to to you know get the right standard contractual clauses in place or some of the other mechanisms in place. So they were really reliant on um, on the privacy shield mechanism as a much easier and reliable tool for for engaging in data transfers with with all the appropriate privacy protections. Um, so we're, we've been hearing from a lot of again both European and American companies that um, that just important to get the as you said the stability the the framework in place that that they can rely on um, so that they can just focus on their business. You know, this past year has had so much disruption to um, to businesses of all kinds, uh, and you know we we. We hear from companies regularly, like we, we don't need any more disruptions to, to business right now. We need to uh, focus on recovery and, and growth and, and working together across the Atlantic. And I, and I, I know the commission and, and, and we here in, uh, in the US government are all um, very aware of that and wanting to do our best to get there. And um, you know, again, that doesn't mean it's easy, but we're, we're, we, want to, we want to make that happen. These da- data flows underpin um, the huge portion of, of the transatlantic economy as, as all of our economies I've seen some statistics that say by 2022, just by next year, that 60% of the economy will, of GDP will be dependent on digital um, technology. And, um, you know, this, this isn't just about the big tech companies that everybody's aware of uh, that, that want to be able to, you know, make, connect people across the world and, you know, optimize their search engines or their social media um, so that so that uh, Milan and I can be Facebook friends and, and, and have conversations on there. It's not just about those big companies trying to do that. It's about the small companies that want to um, open up uh, a business in, in Europe and, and, you know, employ several dozen people there, but they need to be able to process the HR back in, in the United States because uh, it's too expensive to have two different HR systems set up. Um, so, you know, if they can't do that, then they can't employ people in Europe and, and vice versa, companies in Europe that want to um, employ people in the United States. So these, this has impact and you multiply that out by thousands and thousands of companies, it starts to have a real, real impact on, on our, um, our economic recovery. Uh, so it is, it is really important for businesses and, and um, on, again, on both sides of the Atlantic. The United States government um, listens to all of these stakeholders and takes their, their input into account. But our, our primary goal is not to make sure that, um, that you know, Google or Facebook or whoever has what they need, but that, um, that U.S. citizens and the citizens of um, European Union member states and the others that are parts of the agreements have their privacy protected in appropriate ways. And, and, uh, and that, we, that transatlantic data flows can continue, but with appropriate privacy protections in place. Um, we share the same priorities as, as our, our partners in Europe on, on making sure that, that that's done well and correctly. Again, to, to slightly break down what you're saying, uh, are there any, I don't know, red flags for companies that you are hearing because you are, as you said, in discussion uh, with the stakeholders that we certainly don't want to have this or that? Are there, are there such points uh, that the stakeholders are raising up? I would say that the demands that we hear most are just that they need the stability and they need the predictability and, and something that they can rely on. And they're willing to do what it takes um, to, to uh, and, and again, as I said in the first section, the, the issues at play in, this pri- in the privacy shield discussions aren't really about what the companies have been doing or not have been doing. They, they were meeting their obligations. Um, you know, if they weren't, then they were being prosecuted accordingly, but companies were meeting their obligations and it was not their fault that this happened. Um, this is an issue about how, how governments access and use data, um, and, and there's great work going on in the OECD on how we should set standards among like-minded countries for how that should happen, and, um, and again, I think the U.S. has a good story to tell, but the companies really just need that stability and predictability. Mm-hmm. And uh, one more question, which we received actually uh, before this event, uh, the participants that uh, if, if they wanted, they could also send us some question. And I think this is very relevant to ask right now. There is a question of, of the motivation of companies to actually kind of collect and hoard the data, quote unquote, uh, in one place. Uh, in, why are they doing it instead of managing it uh, maybe more on a regional basis? basis? Isn't it maybe possible for such companies to only transfer, uh, for instance, results of the analysis rather than specific data? There are many methods that can be done to do that, but um, there, there are, and there are some situations where that makes the most sense and companies are engaging in what's called data localization. 
it adds expense, it adds, um, it, and it contributes to this sort of splinternet version of the world where we each have our own sort of internets and data pools that are sort of driven by the government top down. That That's not really the vision that the U.S. and, and has for the way the digital economy should work. Um, companies should be free to make the decisions on where they store data based in which is often question um, because you know it's cheaper to put a data center in, in northern Europe than it is in, in, in some, some other places because of weather and things like that. So there's lots of factors that companies have at play um, and that this gets into far more technical than I'm capable of talking about. But um, and then there's issues of if, uh, you know, if a European travels to the United States and wants to use their credit card, um, can their data transfer with them so that they are able to use their credit card? You know, and again, there's separate agreements for financial issues and all of that. So I'm not going to debate the technical finer points of these things, but there's many, many situations in which it's important that the data can speak to each other. And we were talking previously about AI and some of the other technologies of the future, whether it's um, Internet of Things or AI, all of these things re require some big data sets to come together. Um, and again, and a lot of that data can be anonymized and, and things like that. But to build a data set that doesn't um, have biases in it and doesn't discriminate against certain populations, you need to have a very complete data set that includes people from all over the world. Um, but if you, so, if you can only build that data set from one small place or from one part of the world, then then your your products are going to be less effective and less useful, and and maybe have some problems that that um, contribute to other societal problems. So, again, these are sort of big picture issues that that I that that are impacted by this. But there are, I think, the bigger deal is just the small companies that want to just be able to set up shop and engage in transatlantic business, and uh, you know. In, transfer small bits of data here and there as needed to, to make that happen. Yes, yes, I understand. Um, let's go to Brussels now for the, the point of view uh, from the European Commission. Again, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the European Co Commission is very much engaged with uh, in, in discussions with associations, organizations, some other uh, rep representations of, of the industry. What are the main uh, subjects that they are bringing up uh, to you uh, and, and they are waving their flags uh, of, okay, we, we want to be heard on this. These are really our prime, uh, in the most important um, things that, that we care within this debate. Uh, I, I don't hear you, unfortunately. Uh, yes, here we are with the, unmuting, you, you better unmute yourself. There is a, and I, I think it's just on your side, the down left, there is an option of unmuting, no? Uh, because it, it shows that you are muted now currently, so. No. On the left down side. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> so. Probably, I hope we will get get back to to Brussels, uh, but let's let's stay uh, a little bit in Europe. Um, okay, fortunately, this this didn't play as as good as I anticipated, but it's fine, Mr. Andrejkovic. Um, Again, the, the, the risks and challenges and maybe opportunities that uh, Slovak companies may be finding in, in the context of data flow. Do you, um, are they even interested, Slovak companies, what is going to happen um, or how to engage in this transatlantic business or, or is it really such a far away topic for, for the industry or maybe what are the others, uh, other requirements of the industry? Okay, uh, I think this is a big question because based on old uh, physical borders, because uh, now we have the globalization and the world is getting smaller and smaller. So the companies act on both sides of Atlantic and other uh, countries. So um, as I said, Slovakia is a really small country and speaking in V4, Visegrad four countries uh, is, is similar. Uh, so Slovaks, Czechs, and, and Hungarians are five to 10 million people. Uh, only Poland, they are much bigger. And uh, their 
uh, internal markets are really small. So they uh, dependent on open, dependent on open market, dependent on open borders, dependent on everything should be open because they need to sell their goods, their services on international market, not only European, but international market. So therefore uh, they don't provide only physical goods, but services or online goods, which could be sold uh, around the world. So all regulation really uh, have impact on that uh, companies based on our countries. On the other hand, uh, out of biggest Slovak companies, their headquarters are not in Slovakia. For example, US Steel is an example, is an uh, American company and they have a uh, company on Eastern part of Slovakia, but the headquarters is in US. Uh, other car producing companies, they have headquarters in European or out of Europe. Uh, uh, so uh, the rules, how to cope and manage the flow of data, like uh, David said, uh, HR related or some uh, 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 trade secrets and others things that could or can't be uh, exchanged between their headquarters and international or uh, providing public for using it's really important for them to understand how to how to manage the data and uh, i think we have in european union we have uh, much stronger regulation and we as as a people uh, we rely that uh, our data as a consumer for example which are stored uh, somewhere, uh, have the same uh, protection that we are used here. Uh, I remember we uh, commented some uh, trade agreements between European Union and, uh, for example, Australia and New Zealand. And the question about the data protection was uh, really a big part of that uh, comments. And uh, I see that not always we understand each other, how we understand the, uh, the protection of, of data, not only personal data, but all different kinds of data. So it is really important because of globalization and because of openness to understand what's going on on a high level. So we can uh, implement it into our daily work. But when you are saying that uh, sometimes it happens that each side doesn't understand each other or, or the uh, approach towards data protection is different. How, how is it in practice? What, what does it mean? Well, uh, it, it has a more points of view. The first, you know, technical level, what does any uh, data object means? I don't want to go much to detail, but if we exchange, uh, for example, name, if we exchange address, uh, each of uh, different country understands that, uh, that uh, uh, differently. Uh, the second thing is how we exchange it on a technical, it, it's some XML or what kind of data it is uh, used to exchange. Uh, it's the first part. The second part, if we said that uh, data, uh, personal data should be protected, we understand uh, the level which is represented by GDPR. Uh, for example, with these comments to uh, Australia trade uh, agreement, they completely different understand uh, the uh, personal data protection. So we agreed both that the personal data should be protected, but we have different level. But we as, yeah, Bruno, welcome back. But we, we as, a, as a, um, people from European Union, we expect that if there is any agreement with other countries, that uh, what we already have as our, let, let's say, uh, what, what, what the rules we already have that the similar should be uh, on, uh, applied on different uh, and other agreements. We can't hear you. Now I am making the mistakes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, back to uh, back to back to Brussels. Uh, just just to wrap up uh, what I was asking, uh, where the really the stakeholders opinions um, at, at the European level and what, what are you getting as their um, quote unquote demands? Uh, sorry for those uh, connection problems, uh, talking about the challenges of the digital economy. Uh, but um, I mean, what I'm going to say very much echo uh, 
uh, uh, very, very much echoes, sorry, what uh, David has said, and, and, and unfortunately I've, I've missed what Milan has said. What we are hearing from stakeholders, uh, and when I'm talking about stakeholders, I'm talking about uh, uh, business stakeholders, there are of, of course other stakeholders involved here, civil society, institutional stakeholders, but stakeholders. But what we are hearing essentially from the business community is stability, legal certainty. We want this to be solved. Uh, and I also agree with David, that's not only and that was one of the urban legend about uh, uh, this arrangement, uh, the privacy shield. This is not a only a Silicon Valley uh, arrangement. This is not only ab uh, about big companies. This is not only about big tech companies. Uh, data flows are, I would say, the daily bread of many companies uh, in who, uh, uh, a whole range of, of sectors and industries uh, in their daily uh, contracts, exchanges with uh, business partners, customers, vendors, subsidiaries, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, and and that's why uh, uh, there is uh, uh, such a need uh, to work on this arrangement as as well as on other uh, data flows instruments. And and and, my, and and I may say uh, something about that. Your question was also about the significance of uh, 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 transatlantic data flows. Of course, data flows are an essential component not only on trade, but as we see, and unfortunately the, the pandemic uh, has uh, demonstrated that uh, more than uh, we would have uh, uh, hoped or, or, or feared. Uh, it's an essential component of the continuity of many operations, uh, business operations, but also government op operation, social interactions, such as the one uh, 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 we are having today. But just to give you a figure that maybe uh, uh, sort of summarizes the importance of uh, uh, transatlantic data flows, there are actually 55 more data flows via transatlantic ca cables than over uh, transpacific routes. And, and of course, many of those flows are about uh, uh, personal data. So that's uh, the, the, the reality, and that's also the, um, the, the, the demands we are uh, 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 receiving from, from stakeholders. Uh, we believe that in that context, developing strong privacy safeguards uh, and, and promoting the free flow of data are not opposite objectives, but complementary. Not only in this case, here clearly we have to fulfill the requirements of the code, but if we want to have trusted uh, 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 data flows, this needs uh, to go uh, needs to go with uh, privacy standards, with security standards, uh, to the benefit of, uh, of, of everybody, uh, 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 customers, uh, consumers, uh, and, and businesses. And it's in that, uh, on that basis that Yes, we are actively engaged uh, with the U.S. on developing the success arrangement to the, to the privacy shield, but we are also busy on other fronts, uh, uh, so-called standard contractual clauses, which are actually the number one uh, transfer mechanism used by European companies when transferring data abroad. Those are very useful for, for small and medium enterprises because they are sort of off-the-shelf uh, mechanisms that uh, you can then introduce in your commercial contracts, and that's very important for companies that don't have all these uh, the resources in-house or, or to external uh, uh, advice, uh, le legal resources, uh, financial resources, etc. So that that sort of, uh, 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 as I said, off-the-shelf uh, tool is uh, uh, something that we believe is very important. We have uh, modernized them, and we have modernized a number of aspects also make, make, to make them more user-friendly. And we have also, in a certain sense, uh, uh, drawn some consequences from the Schrems tool judgment and. And, and, and make that judgment more operational through, through a checklist of factors uh, that need to be uh, checked, also uh, elements or, or safeguards uh, that could be uh, introduced if, if, if there's a need uh, for, for additional uh, safeguards. We are now uh, through the uh, decision uh, making uh, process, uh, our, uh, adoption, which also involves as a, as a, as a last stage uh, the member states in, 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 a, in a few weeks, those, those new instruments. Uh, will be in place. And we are also engaging, and that's, I think, very important because I understand that uh, Schrems II, the Schrems II judgment and this saga with the US, and it's not the first time we're going through this, raises a number of questions, anxieties, concerns, sometimes excitement. But there's also a, a more positive story to that. Uh, we have raised, of course, we have already mentioned how I think uh, 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 with, with this administration, uh, uh, we can have a very ambitious and successful uh, digital agenda. But what's happening also in other parts of the world is very important. Uh, uh, we, we see that there's increasing convergence 
uh, on the need to uh, develop modern privacy safeguards and to uh, facilitate data flows through uh, a, a, a high level of protection of personal data. And that convergence, of course, uh, uh, leads to more opportunities uh, to develop uh, 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 mechanisms that allow the free and the safe uh, flow of data. We did this with Japan two years ago. We actually created with Japan uh, uh, the biggest area of uh, uh, free and safe data flows in the world. Uh, we have, uh, as, as I was saying uh, at the beginning of our, of, of, of our panel of our event today, we have uh, just uh, negotiated a similar arrangement uh, with uh, uh, South Korea. Uh, this is also very uh, a very important part of our post-Brexit agenda with the UK, and we are engaging with other countries in Asia or in uh, 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 and in, uh, for instance, uh, Latin Latin America. And I think that's important because uh, it 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 allows a group of countries uh, to uh, uh, that share uh, common values and common principles uh, to. Uh, 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 share data, uh, not only, I would say, on a bilateral basis between mm -hmm. us and Japan, but also uh, 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 amongst, there's a certain critical mass or network effect of, of those arrangements, uh, which uh, we believe uh, are, are, are very, is very uh, 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 promising. And uh, can we already, probably it's early to say, but, but do you anticipate that the new uh, EU-US uh, agreement on that would be similar or anyhow reflecting of what EU currently has with uh, Japan or, or with the South Korea? Will it be similar or of data? Yes, but if, if the negotiation things? is, uh, of course, different because our systems are different and, and the objective of such negotiation is not about having identical systems. It's finding bridges between systems that share uh, common values, share common principles, but, uh, and, and, but may, may deliver a certain outcome here, level of protection of privacy through different means. Uh, so the, the, the requirements we have to fulfill to uh, 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 conclude those, those deals are of course the same, uh, the requirements of, of, uh, that have been clarified by, by the Court of Justice. Uh, the, the effect, the consequences of, of those deals is the same. It means uh, 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 free flow of that. Actually, adequacy, this, uh, this instrument, the, the instrument of an adequacy decision is a, one of the very few instruments we have in, in EU law to extend the benefits of the internal market in terms of free flow of data to a third country. And that's also why it requires a, a quite similar, a comparable uh, level of protection. So the instrument and the, and the policy objectives are, are the same, of course. Uh, the, 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 the content of, of this arrangement will, will clearly di differ according to uh, the specificities of uh, uh, one system uh, or, or, or the other. Um, yeah. And there is, and if I may say so, because David has also or, or, uh, or, or already mentioned it, 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 I would say a new entry in this debate is the uh, plurilateral or multilateral dimension. I think, and it's a very good development, that we need international standards on these issues. Uh, and they, there is an increasing demand for that. And it's interesting that the number of organizations that would not typically uh, deal with this issue, I'm thinking about G20, G7, OECD, uh, are now having put this, this issue of, of privacy and data flows uh, uh, at, the, at the very top of the agenda. And indeed, there is very interesting work which maybe is not on the first page uh, of, of the newspapers on, 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 on um, the development of common standards in the context of the OECD um, on governance access to data. So how do we as like-minded country ensure that when government for very little legitimate reasons of uh, criminal law enforcement, national security, when government needs to access personal data, this is done in a way which is uh, 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 which uh, protects against abusers, which is to use the European uh, lingua, but it's not only European, proportionate and unnecessary, and which also gives uh, a number of uh, redress possibility to individuals. Uh, the fact that the OECD members uh, have decided to look at uh, and to develop such stand standards is a very, uh, a, a very interesting development, and we are working very closely with the initiator, actually, of, of this initiative, which is Japan, but also with the US, 
uh, uh, that that work uh, uh, is, I would say, one of the pieces of that jigsaw or of that puzzle uh, we are we are discussing today. Absolutely, yes. Thank you for also mentioning the, the other multilateral, multilateral uh, debates that are ongoing because it's also not only on data, we have it on, on other similar areas within the digital economy as well. Um, let's move a little bit to the public users and to the utilization uh, of the data by the governments or, or connection between the public data and, and governments. Uh, I also will one more in, one more time encourage our audience if uh, there is any question, uh, any comment, feel free to write either on Q and A's or uh, raise your hand. Uh, we will be absolutely glad to uh, to hear uh, your opinion. Um, so back to Washington. Um, I think the the kind of a um, title or headline of of the um, Court of Justice, um, res um, the, the Court of Justice decision uh, was that uh, it was a question of privacy and, and the pri uh, personal data. And literally, I think it, it had already been mentioned that the customers uh, on both sides of Atlantic really deserve to know how their personal data will be maintained, um, how they are going to be kept secure, how they are going to be used. Uh, utilitized and how this is going to be fully uh, sustainable. Um, and um, in the particular case that we that we had last year was um, a question mark of the European Union of the utilization of the personal data of Europeans uh, by the government in the United States. But uh, this law is probably going to stay as it is or are there any um, information or discussions whether uh, the US is going to somehow upgrade those um, laws and um, kind of framework uh, that it is using currently um, in order really to step up and, and get, uh, get this, what we are all talk talking about, the sustainability, the, the trust in privacy and security um, really in place. Yeah, thanks, Lucia. That's I think you've get, gotten to the crux of the matter here, right? And that this is the focus of, of these discussions that we're having with the commission. Um, because those conversations need to be um, very frank and, and forthright in, in the negotiation room, I'm, I'm not going to get into any sort of specific details of, of what is under discussion or, or, or uh, the details of that, we'll, we'll we'll see where it all shakes out. And frankly, I'm I'm not as close to it as Bruno and the and the lawyers on my side. Um, anyway, so I would probably get it wrong if I tried. So I I will uh, I will defer on that. But just to and the sort of big picture question, yes, this is exactly what's happening. That the U.S. is looking to see um, how best to address this court decision, which focuses on government access to data. Um, and we've talked about the various aspects of that, whether whether the collection of data is proportional to the need, whether it's absolutely necessary, um, and then whether people have a redress mechanism to get at it. And we believe, we believe strongly that the United States system of national security access to data is, is uh, among the most transparent and among the most, um, has, has some of the best oversight of any in the world. Uh, we, we think that we've, we've, over the last number of years, we've put in more and more protections, including protections that apply for um, citizens of EU member states um, and others around the world to, uh, to ensure that we um, aren't, aren't accessing data unnecessarily or, or disproportionately, um, to use, as Bruno said, to use the EU words for it. Um, but, uh, and, and the redress mechanism is a challenge because of, you know, there's sort of different constitutional structures in the way the United States works and the way, um, the way the European system works. But the basic principle that individuals should have access to a mechanism to make sure that, uh, that, that the government is not abusing their access to, to data is, is absolutely something that we agree with and, and believe in. And we believe we can find a way to address, um, these these concerns that the court has raised about the, the previous privacy shield mechanism, in a in a in a in a, in a way that will um, satisfy those those concerns. 
And just to say, this isn't, you know, maybe if maybe you'll say, well, he's a government, U.S. government representative. So, of course, he's going to say that the U.S. government is great at these things. But it's not just me. Um, I'm flip over to this other paper. The, uh, the U.N. Special Rapporteur for Privacy uh, said that the United States is easily one of the top 10 or 20 countries in the world when it comes to the extent to which the right to privacy is protected in the realm of surveillance. So we're, it's not just us saying this, and our work in the OECD, I think, is confirming that the U.S. is, um, is, is leading uh, a lot of these efforts. Um, and that's not to say that we're perfect, of course. I, I don't want to say that everybody should do it exactly how the U.S. is doing it, and we have the only model that works. Um, we want to continue to learn from our European partners and from others around the world. As, as Bruno said, the Japanese are real leaders in this space. We want to learn from others um, how we can improve, and, and we want to make sure we're addressing the, the court's decision or um, to, to develop this uh, successor agreement for the privacy shield as soon as possible. And uh, just because when the GDPR uh, had been introduced, uh, European Union or institutions were, were saying a lot that this is going to be a, a groundbreaking rule and it's going to kind of extend beyond European Union. It, it did because it absolutely influenced the, um, the, the companies and private sector. But uh, is it, is it currently influencing uh, the, the, the lawmaking or the, the way how the administration is thinking about the privacy of data? Is the GDPR influencing? I, th I, think, I think it's definitely one of the, the points of, of reference that um, policymakers are looking at. We've seen in the United States that several states are moving forward and have moved forward with, with privacy legislation that in some ways echoes GDPR, um, has some differences, but has some, some overlap. Um, and that's often the way policies are developed in the United States is that individual states start to do things and, and they're sort of test beds. And as something becomes clearly a best practice that makes sense, then, then the federal government will adopt it. So it takes, some would say too long for some of these things to happen um, uh, and, and for it all to work out. But um, I, there are, there is a significant caucus in the United States Congress that wants to develop federal privacy legislation. And a number of them have said that, you know, the GDPR is one of the points of reference for, for what they're looking to do. I would, I would expect that whatever, if and when the U.S. does, does uh, institute federal privacy legislation, that it will not be um, a replica of GDPR, but that we will do our best to learn from the best practices um, and and uh, learn lessons from from the implementation of GDPR and making sure that we do our best to uh, to to take the best of it and, and apply it in the United States as well. Mm -hmm. But I can't speak for Congress, so who knows where they go? Of course, of course, I'm really. I think it, it's a question of of a debate, and I'm also interested on your on your opinion. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Gentilly, I think uh, you also have uh, things to add to this. So, very similar question. How how is uh, European Union planning to ensure that the data are going to end up uh, safe, secure, and um, that the work with them will be sustainable? Yes, sure. But as I said, we have a quite a clear mandate, which is given by our highest court, and which concerns uh, the issues we've mentioned: access to court, enforceable individual rights, uh, limitation against excessive interference uh, with privacy. And uh, there is probably there are elements of the U.S. system on which we can build, we can work, and others where we would need to uh, the negotiators we, we we need to to work hard and and and, and find solution. But that's uh, that's uh, what any negotiation is about. And as I said, this is a particular complex area because, and as and this is true for the U.S. as it is uh, as it is true uh, true for us, uh, issues. Uh, around the interplay between privacy and national security are complex issues, sensitive issues, and issues that also, uh, which are, as we can see from the very rich uh, case law on this side of the Atlantic, uh, 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 there are the issues on which they, 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 there's an evolving, I would say, uh, dimension and clarification on, on how that, uh, that interplay uh, uh, should, uh, should work. But I think, uh, and that, Equals both your questions and 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 what David said that I think they uh, may be more common ground uh, to work on these issues today than even uh, just a, a few years ago. Uh, privacy is indeed uh, high on uh, 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 the U.S. Uh, domestic agenda, as it has been recalled. Uh, the demand for modern privacy rules in the U.S. is increasing, is increasing both at state level, from California to Virginia, and and at at, at federal level. I have seen that myself in my experience. Uh, 
not so many years ago, when I would travel to the US, I was at the time responsible for negotiating uh, uh, the, the GDPR and the Law Enforcement Directive, which is a, another text on, on processing of personal data by criminal law enforcement authorities. When I would go to the US, the question was very much, how on earth, why on earth are you doing this? Uh, it's outdated privacy, is an outdated concept. At, now, uh, this has completely changed. And I think it is good that this discussion is much less ideological. And I don't want to pass any judgment of, of who was uh, 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 right or wrong. I have my professional views on that. It's, it's much less ideological, but it's more about, so it's no, the question I received is it's, it's no longer why, but uh, 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 how you did it. Mm-hmm. Or why did you make that choice on, on a specific issue? Uh, and there we might agree, disagree, uh, discuss. But that's, I would say, an, an enormous uh, 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 change uh, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the transatlantic debate, which I think is, is, is very helpful. There is indeed, it's not that the people around the world uh, ha, ha, have uh, 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 fallen in love with uh, the EU or the GDPR. I think the EU was the first to move and to understand that this was one of the key issues of our times, actually, uh, at the same level, maybe than climate change uh, privacy. And we have seen in the meantime, uh, also in the electoral context, how a violation of privacy can even threaten the very foundations of, of our democracy. So we are talking about real issue and important issue. So the EU had uh, probably a certain advantage in which it, it was the first uh, one to, to, to move on these issues. That made us, and it's not me saying it, it's Chancellor Merkel, uh, a rule maker rather than a rule taker as, as we might be uh, in, in other fields. Yes, maybe, but uh, this convergence is taking place. I mean, if, if a country like Japan decides to modernize its data protection legislation, it's not because of the GDPR. It's because Japan has, uh, 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 through its own uh, uh, domestic debate, realized that this is an important issue, that there are important challenges uh, uh, to address, but also important opportunities. Because if you want data to be shared, first of all, uh, 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 within your country, within your domestic economy, across the public and the private sector, and to be trusted uh, 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 by, uh, and, and that processing and the collection of data to be trusted by consumers, you need uh, uh, privacy standards. Uh, the sustainability of the, of, of the digital economy depends very much on consumer trust. So it, mm-hmm. it is, first of all, for these reasons, that countries around the world uh, uh, have uh, uh, modernized their data protection uh, legislation, and they have done it generally uh, on the basis of a, uh, a common set of principles, rules, uh, governance structure, and that, as I said, facilitates the discussion on, on, on data flows. There's maybe one last uh, 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 dimension uh, I want to to uh, uh, to mention. We, we have discussed about consumer privacy, if you want. Uh, 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 privacy or, um, requirements applying to to private companies. Uh, we have talked about we have talked about the issue of uh, issues uh, around uh, governance access uh, uh, to data. But there's another uh, issue which is which is very important for us uh, and that concerns data is uh, making a very clear distinction between, on the one hand, uh, uh, genuine data protection. And on the other hand, uh, uh, data or, 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 or digital uh, uh, protectionism. Uh, the EU has uh, developed uh, in its uh, trade policy uh, a novel approach uh, that aims at uh, uh, um, 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 that aims at uh, introducing in its trade agreement systematically uh, 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 digital uh, uh, chapters. Uh, but also uh, introducing very clear and straightforward prohibition of uh, data uh, localization requirements, while uh, 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 having an emphasis on the importance of data flows and how privacy can contribute to a free and safe data flows. Uh, the agreement, uh, and the, the first agreement we, we concluded, and that contains that very clear and straightforward uh, 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 prohibition of uh, uh, data localization, uh, which we believe has nothing to do with uh, the protection of privacy. And data localization has never been in the DNA, I, must, uh, I would say, of uh, uh, EU data protection rules in Europe. The first agreement in which we have int- uh, introduced that, uh, that uh, uh, straightforward prohibition is the TCA, so the Trade and Cooperation Agreement we concluded uh, uh, with the UK. So 
what is generally called the, the Brexit uh, agreement. And, uh, and that was a very important precedent. Uh, it, it shows that we can be uh, 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 assertive uh, uh, also on, on that front. Uh, and there is also there a, a link with the more multilateral dimension, because as we're speaking, there are important negotiations in, in Geneva in the context of the uh, World Trade Organization on uh, e-commerce. Uh, and, and questions around, on the one hand, uh, 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 digital protectionism uh, 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 and uh, restrictive and unjustified restrictions such as a certain data localization uh, measures on the one hand and the necessary protection of our regulatory autonomy in the area of privacy and the possibility to decide uh, 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 at, at which level we want to protect uh, uh, privacy are important issues also in that context. That's why I, I wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, good, good that you make, made that point. I think the localization is uh, also very relevant for for uh, Slovakia or maybe the, the data that are um, not private, uh, uh, primarily in maybe in English. I, perhaps that that may also be um, uh, on the topic. There is one question that we had from uh, Martin Shechny, and I think it may be directed to you, Mr. Gens uh, Genshirley. One important point in the EU US data transfer and the use. Uh, is a default opt-in versus opt-out, uh, default opt-out policy. Uh, I am not very familiar, to be very honest, uh, about uh, what, what is uh, that concept. Could you explain it? And uh, Martin Shechny is asking, uh, is there any move on the positions? Well, that, that concerns a part of the of the of the privacy sheet that has not been affected uh, by the, the court judgment. Now, the court. Uh, 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 annul the privacy sheet for, uh, and I'm very comfortable to say it because, of course, uh, the Commission has been uh, defending uh, uh, the, the validity of the privacy sheet, but because the court uh, found that uh, there were not uh, uh, no sufficient safeguards in the privacy sheet against uh, disproportionate access to data for national security uh, reasons, uh, in terms of uh, insufficient access of uh, EU. Uh, data subjects or your citizen basically to to redress mechanism in that area the court didn't uh, pronounce itself on another part of the privacy sheet that concerns the requirements that companies have to comply with to benefit from the free flow of data uh, so that's not part of of our discussion and for us adequacy uh, uh, an adequate that's called once again uh, the, 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 so this this type of negotiation, which are called uh, uh, which lead to a so-called adequate decision, and not about a point-to-point -point replication of uh, 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 EU rules. That's not what adequacy is. If it was about that, I would be, I would close my shop uh, 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 tonight. And the, even the Court of Justice has been very clear that different system can provide can deliver a certain outcome in terms of protection of privacy using different means. Uh, and, and that's very important. It's, 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 it, it, is, it is very important to be able to be open to data flows while uh, ensuring a, a high level uh, of protection. And, and indeed, things can be done uh, differently in different systems. And, and, and those, those, those mechanisms that we are discussing here are there to provide bridges uh, between, between those, those, those different systems. So, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to make a long story so th that aspect is not an aspect that uh, is uh, currently the, the, the subject of uh, our uh, negotiation, which are exclusively about uh, the points uh, um, that were on which the Court of Justice uh, uh, raised uh, concern and that led to the invalidation of the privacy sheet framework. And if I understand, there is is there some kind of request? To change it from the industry, or uh, or or not, or, or is there an opportunity? Well, in any in any, um, and that would be very much part of the, and that's why I, mean, I don't want to speak for uh, David or, or my American friends, but uh, in in any uh, uh, debate, and there are debates and discussion and conversation around privacy legislation right now uh, in the U.S., including at federal level, the question of uh, what are the grounds on which you can collect data. And if uh, consent uh, uh, of you, of me, of consumer is one of these grounds, whether this has to be a, an opt-in, which uh, for an opt-in approach, which uh, I have to uh, 
positively and uh, uh, in an affirmative way express uh, 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 my uh, uh, agreement to you, company, uh, collecting my data, or whether uh, uh, this is follows an opt-out approach, in, in, in uh, according to which uh, you uh, uh, can, uh, under certain condition, uh, object uh, to a certain company processing data, is a, one of the key issue uh, the development of any privacy framework uh, has has to address. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, in our in the EU system, which is far from being only based on consent, uh, there has been a, a strengthening of the requirements uh, for uh, consent and uh, affirmative and the requirement for an affirmative action by, by consumers uh, when consent is used. Other systems uh, uh, deal with that in different ways. We would then need to enter into uh, uh, the details of, of each and every, every system, and I don't think that is, is the purpose of, of today's discussion. But I'm not surprised of that question, and I'm surprised that that question is also present in, in the U.S. debate. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Andrejkovic, I'm wondering now about the... Slovakia doesn't have an official position yet, but there are certain uh, goals, attempts, or maybe a basis where uh, the... the created from uh, towards uh, the usage of public data. Uh, do you, can, can you explain what, where, where the Slovakia is coming from or whether our position might be in any way differing from other member states? Well, the situation is really complex and complicated when speaking on a national level. Uh, you already said that uh, Slovakia is not yet data-driven economy, but we would like to develop as well data-driven government, which means that uh, now if the government uh, adopt uh, or have some resolution uh, usually based on expert estimates because uh, they lack data. And uh, what, we would uh, what we would like to uh, prepare is the situation when government policies and strategic documents are based on analysis, on predictions, on evaluations that are based on good quality data. So the government needs a lot of data from inside the country. And then, when, because we are not an uh, isolated country, we, we, we need to compare how it's developed in other countries. So we need the, the similar or same data from the other countries in, in order to understand how we develop. Are we faster, are we slower, are we completely different? Uh, for now, uh, we would like to implement one's only principle. So the people or company give the data to the government only once and the government inside exchange the data uh, based on how it needs. The, the other institutions. Mm -hmm. But people in already mentioned working groups then expressed a lot of fear that how this data could be misused. We have a lot of historic experience that uh, exchange of uh, my personal data about me, about my company in uh, within the government could be wrong. So people are not really now happy and ready to give a lot of data to the government to Slovak government, not even to the foreign governments, because they are afraid of it. On the other hand, they uh, expect that the government is uh, small, smaller and smaller when uh, be in touch with them. So they expect on one hand, one's only principle to have implemented imperfect. On the other hand, they are afraid what uh, the government is doing with the data they collect. Uh, therefore, we decided to implement in our already mentioned uh, data act, the concept of international, uh, uh, it's called my data. It's different than personal data concept, it's my data concept, and uh, it will bring transparency when uh, in using of my data with the government. And then I can decide voluntarily to exchange my data to other agencies, whether private or public agencies, because I understand how they, I, why they need, how they use it, and why they need it. Mm -hmm. So we, we go from the from the again from the bottom that uh, people should be ready to give the data to the government because they have trust to the government what they 
why they need it, and what the government do with their data. So this will be, uh, I hope, um, as a step to develop uh, Slovakia as a data-driven government country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I understand. Good. Um, to wrap it up, now um, we discussed the, the, the general agenda that we have. We discussed the points of view of the industry, uh, the points of view or maybe expectations uh, of public. Uh, but what is ahead of us now? Now the main question. Um, are we going to have some uh, new replacement of the privacy shield? Uh, is it How long is this going to take? Because uh, it seems that it's quite a pressing issue, not only for companies, we already discussed it, but uh, there are more new technologies. Uh, European Union presented uh, its AI strategy. Uh, this is going to be very much concerned as well, although uh, European Union is stepping uh, very slowly toward, I don't, I don't mean to uh, like make it in a, mean it in any negative way, but rather um, with consciousness uh, to, to approach those developments. Some uh, stakeholders are saying that if more we will regulate, more constraint it will bring to European businesses or, or to smaller businesses and the innovation will not uh, be able to, to kick in. So all those many elements and, and many more that, that you have mentioned during the discussion are in play. Uh, so what is that? What is your anticipation? Um, David, Mu, uh, you are sitting there in the table. How do you see that this is this is going to go? And when are when can we expect some kind of agreement? It's a it's a good question. I mean, I I, uh, I would say that I am confident that we will get there. Um, going back to the sort of big picture of our shared values, our shared vision for how this how it should work, and and how we can you know our principles as Bruno outlined of our commitments to um, data flows with with the right protections in place. Um, I, th I think that. Are, we have so much in common on this um, that it's you know we have to we have to get to the right solution um, as soon as possible. But to specifically, when I, I can't say yet. I think that you know it's still um, our our team and Bruno's team are we're working really hard to try to make make sure to do this right. We don't want to we don't want to have to go through this again, frankly. And we um, we want to have that stability and certainty the companies are seeking. We want that to be real and long lasting. So um, we're gonna spend the time to do it right, but um, with a complete sense of urgency that, that it needs to be done as soon as possible to provide um, companies and citizens uh, the protections and the and the certainty that they that they need. Um, so does that answer it okay? I know you would like a I, date. I will slightly dig deeper. Do you anticipate some of the elements will be a little bit more problematic than the others? Let's let's ask this way. I, I don't think anything more than what we've talked about already about the challenges of making sure that you know the specific things that the court outlined in the um, in the in the decision, which we all are trying very carefully to make sure we address those specific things that the court said were inadequate um, before. Um, and some of those things run into it, it's not it's again not um, like we don't want to do this or we have a principle that's that's in conflict or a big picture principle. It's simply. How do we make sure our legal systems can talk to each other in the right way? Like our, the way our constitution is set up versus the way um, the, the European Union is set up uh, under its treaties. It, there's certain things that are not easy to get over. So, and, and I, I won't go into any more detail because again, I would get it wrong and, and Bruno would have to correct me, but, um, but the, it, it, make, it makes it very challenging, but our lawyers are very committed to, to finding the right solution on the basis of our shared values. You know that I would want to hear what is that, but I'm 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 let it I'm going to let it flow as data. From <laughs> again, uh, Shirley, um, same question basically to you: How how does Brussels how Brussels anticipate uh, this to develop? Same question and same answer. No, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I would say totally agree. Sense of urgency uh, on both sides. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, readiness, uh, uh, um, eagerness, and uh, intense engagement on, on both sides. Uh, the important here is, is quality. If we would in, do something, which we would not agree, <laughs> uh, 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 but if we would do something that uh, would be weak, would not meet uh, the requirements uh, uh, of the court, would be uh, uh, at risk of a 
a, a new challenge and a new invalidation, that would not be uh, to the benefit of anyone mm -hmm. on either side of the Atlantic. Uh, really, uh, uh, and we discussed this previously today, uh, what uh, uh, we need is uh, uh, stability and, and legal certainty, and uh, you don't uh, ensure stability and legal certainty through a shaky, quick fix, quick fix uh, 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 arrangement. So uh, we are working hard. I think we will even work uh, harder in the following week, uh, weeks or months. But indeed, I, I cannot tell you uh, uh, when uh, this will be will, this will be done. But I think it's stakeholders and the members of your, your audience should be reassured that, as you've heard, and this is not just a nice uh, communication uh, pitch, uh, this is uh, uh, really a, a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you had the joint statement of our two leaders uh, on this, uh, uh, that uh, sh shows it, I think. And I can tell you that this is often mentioned, uh, 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 even at the highest level uh, in uh, transatlantic uh, in, in meetings uh, we have uh, with uh, uh, the, the US uh, administration. And more generally, I think that what you've seen uh, is uh, indeed an, an, an ambitious and an open uh, approach uh, uh, to digital issues uh, that for us have a number of, of different dimensions. Uh, first, uh, you know, we, 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 we are not we are not naive, we will want to be equipped uh, for this uh, uh, digital world. And, and you've seen that, for instance, the EU has taken very important decisions in terms of investment in uh, digital services, in, uh, 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 in digital infrastructure. Uh, uh, we have adopted uh, the last summer what we call the multi-annual uh, 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 budgetary framework, which together with the green, where uh, digital issues together with the Green Deal, uh, is uh, uh, meaning really at, at the top uh, in terms of uh, uh, investment expenses. Uh, for us, uh, being uh, assertive uh, and uh, ambitious means also ensuring a level of playing field at home, and that's where the GDPR comes into place, and where other initiatives uh, we have seen uh, uh, developing uh, 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 the uh, uh, data governance, uh, the uh, AI initiative, uh, 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 comes uh, come into play. This is making sure that uh, whoever offer goods and services uh, on the EU market is is, is subject to to, to 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 the same rules and and to modern rules uh, uh, that, for instance, uh, favor the sharing of data because we need the sharing of data. We need it. Think about the times we are uh, going through now. We need it, for instance, for research, for medical research. But that can happen only if it is done in in a trust trusted way. And then the external uh, uh, aspect or dimension of that policy, which is to, to contribute to the development of uh, uh, international standards. Uh, uh, and, and, and we are very happy uh, to, to, to now uh, be able to, to work with a, a, a US administration that is also more open uh, to the uh, 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 multilateral dimension of these issues as uh, 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 many other issues uh, Let's think about uh, uh, the, the current summit on, on climate change, uh, for instance. So uh, that's in a nutshell where, as you can see, this issue of data flows uh, also is part of, of a much uh, uh, bigger picture, uh, uh, which I, I think is, is very important, uh, not only to uh, European businesses, and I guess many of uh, 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 the uh, people following us today are a representative of European business, but also for each of us as, as European citizens. Thank you very much. Again, <laughs> several important points and uh, definitely we, we are hoping that they all will be addressed. Uh, last word from Milan Andrejkovic. Slovakia, our member states are not directly sitting on that table, in the table, at, around the table, <laughs> but uh, you already mentioned that there are opinions, there are strong opinions, and there, there is this bottom bottom up approach. Um, if we had that chance, what what we would expect? Or now there is a Washington connected, there is Brussels connected. What what should Slovakia uh, say say to both sides? Okay, uh, at the beginning, uh, if uh, there is any interest, we can provide our opinions or uh, comments uh, from the street level 
because we have a lot of these working groups consisting of uh, public servants, of uh, NGOs and, and businesses. So if there's any interest, we can still uh, provide comments on, on all of these negotiations, if there's any interest. But at, at the end, what really uh, matters is the impact or result on our daily lives, because we cannot touch data. So it's not about uh, how, we, uh, how we manage the data. It's about how we use the data then and how it influences our daily lives, whether it's business, it's personal, it's, it's, uh, it's on government level. So uh, just what uh, usually we call for is to understand the impact of regulation. So what will happen tomorrow after we adopt the regulation? That's all for me for now. Yes, that's absolutely uh, crystal clear and, and uh, an important point for Slovak smaller businesses for, for the country as well. Thank you very much. We are uh, just one minute uh, over the time. Uh, thank you everybody for staying with us. Thank you to our panelists, David Mu, Digital Economy Officer from Bureau of the European Affairs at the US Department of State. Uh, thank you for connecting uh, from Washington and for your very, very much valued inputs. Uh, Bruno Gencherelli, Head of International Data Flows and Protection Unit uh, at the European Commission. Thank you really from the table, from the discussions, we got the main points. Uh, and thank you, Slovakia. It's absolutely. very important to, and thank you, Slovakia. It's very important to have an opportunity to uh, address uh, uh, all our member states. And uh, uh, indeed, those, uh, those discussions uh, take too often uh, place in Brussels or in Washington. But this is uh, important for everybody in Europe. Yes. So thank, thank you for having organized this. Thank you very much for, for participating, really. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that it is exactly the, the way how we were approaching this as well. And to Milan uh, uh, Andrejkovic, head of the Central Data Office at the Ministry of Inf Investment, Regional De Development and Informatization of the Slovak Republic. So thank you very much, all three of you, for your inputs. Uh, our colleagues at the Embassy of the United States in the Slovak Republic who helped us to organize, uh, organize it together with Euro Policy and you're active. As I said, this will be available as video, as podcast. There will be also an article uh, to pick up the main points. Uh, and I hope that sometimes very soon we will see each other in person and we will continue. Definitely, uh, you're active will be following that issue. So thank you, everybody, to our audience as well. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Lucia.